I thought what we might do today before we actually look at preparing for a competency-based interview, I would just talk for a few minutes on what exactly is a competency. It's not something you would think about every day, but there is a bit of a difference between a skill and a competency. So usually when I ask this question, most people either don't know or they get, you know, they nearly get it right. But there is a small difference, but it's a very, very important difference. And the difference is this. When we talk about skill, it's usually, you know, a learned activity. So it can be anything from giving a presentation to driving a car or performing brain surgery. So again, different activities require different level of skills. You obviously don't want somebody to perform brain surgery on you who's not very skilled. So a skill or somebody who's driving a car who's not a great car driver. So a skill can tell us what types of abilities a person needs to perform a specific activity or a job. But what the competencies are, are how you do the job. So your competencies are your behaviours, your actions and your attitudes. So that's the important thing to remember. A skill is a learned activity and a competency is how you do that activity. So that's going to be important in a few minutes when we're talking about competency based interviews. But just to remember that a skill is what you can do, but the competency is how you do it. So why do employers use competencies? They're a big part of the recruitment process and they can be at the very beginning of the recruitment process when you have your online applications. You may be asked some competency based questions throughout the, commute or the recruitment process then. It could be a competency based interview. You may be invited to an assessment centre where you'll be scored on your behaviours or your competencies as well. So the focus from an employer's point of view is to look at what skills and behaviours you demonstrate. So again, it's not just about your skills, but it's about the behaviours as well. So how can you find out do you know what an employer is looking for? It's very easy. Have a look at the job description, see what competencies they're listing, and they're the competencies that you need to prepare. OK, so you've had a look at the job description. How then do you identify your competencies? OK, so this takes a little bit of work, but I think if you go into a competency based interview, it's very easy to be caught off guard at a competency based interview if you're not prepared. So by doing some research and preparation beforehand, you will be more than prepared. So first of all, what you need to do is you need to identify the list of skills slash competencies from the job description. So that's the very first thing you need to do. Then you need to think about, OK, Say it's teamwork, for example, what does this look like when somebody's performing this to a high level? So it's not just enough to think about, OK, teamwork is one competency or skill, but what does that actually look like? What behaviours are associated with high performing teamwork skills? The next thing you need to do then is to think about the specific examples that you have that give evidence of your ability in each of the competencies. So where will you get this evidence from? So it can be from your undergraduate degree, your postgraduate degree, any work experience, co-op placements, professional experience, if you have a few years of experience. If you don't have a huge amount of experience at this stage, that's absolutely fine because a lot of graduate employers will be using competency based recruitment methods and they're looking for competencies that you may have developed through your volunteering activities, through sports, any other extracurricular activities. But it really is a case of you understanding what the competencies are, what do they look like, what's the evidence that you have and how can you articulate that then at an interview. OK, so let's have an example. Teamwork. OK, so that's a that's a competency that practically every employer will look for. So the first thing we need to do is think about well, what does you know, what's the definition of teamwork? Very simply, it's working collaboratively with others to achieve team goals and objectives. So that's the definition of teamwork. But what does that look like? If you see somebody who's a really good team worker, what does it look like? OK, so it's somebody who gives help an active support to colleagues, somebody who does their fair share of work, they take on work willingly. A really important one here that they will try their hand at different tasks to benefit the team. 
they'll understand the impact of their actions on others and they'll share information openly. So I think this is a really important part when you're identifying the competencies that you'll need to prepare for at the interview. First of all, what does it mean? What does it look like? And then where's your example? Okay. And a specific example, that's, that's really important, that word specific. So here's an example. I was looking at some graduate programmes recently and Enterprise Ireland are recruiting for two graduate programmes at the moment. Closing date is the 31st of October. They have an international graduate programme and a national graduate programme. Both of them are two years long. I had to look at the skills and competences that they were looking for. So this is what I saw. They're looking for people or they're looking for confident individuals who are professional, client focused, highly motivated, with the energy and enthusiasm to deliver projects and results. They're also looking for excellent communication, networking and relationship building skills with teamwork and flexible approach as well. So if you, if you were to look at that job description, what I've done is I've highlighted what I think are the competencies that they're looking for. So that's what you should be doing as well when you're looking at a job description. If they have a specific section on skills, competencies, things that are essential, things that are desirable, highlight those competencies and think about, OK, how can I demonstrate? Do it well, first of all, what does it mean? Secondly, do you know, what do these actions or behaviours look like? And three, where have I demonstrated those? So I think they have about nine or ten competencies there. So what I would do with those competencies, for example, is I would say to myself, OK, I'd write them all down and, you know, how would I rate myself at the moment? Three, being very well, two, satisfactory, one, possibly needs work. And then I'd try and think of a specific example for each one. OK, so that's where the work comes in, really. So long before you actually attend the competency based interview, you have gone through the job description, you've looked at the competencies you've thought about what they mean. For example, we look at client focused. What does that mean? Creativity. What does that mean? So you need to spend a little bit of time thinking about what does this mean? What kind of behaviours do you know, does this look like when somebody's performing this competency to a high level? And can I think of a specific example for each one? So again, a little bit of work, a little bit of preparation there. An easy way to think about what your competencies are is there's a quite short, it's a 15 to 20 minute free competency assessment test that you can do online. There's the link there, 123test.com forward slash competency test. It gives a definition for the competencies. It will, well, you rate yourself on how you perform in different areas and you'll get some feedback as well. So if you want a bit of kind of help or assistance in understanding what your competencies are, how to use the language required in the world of competencies, how to present yourself using competency language, the language of competencies. That's just a handy test that you can do. It's completely free of charge as well, but it really will just get you thinking about, OK, what are my strengths? What are my competencies? Where have I demonstrated them? So have a go at that test if you want to find out a little bit more. OK, so I've talked about what competencies are and remember, it's really how you behave, your actions, your attitudes, as well as what you're doing. So competency based interviews are really, are really popular with graduate employers. They're also really popular with public sector companies. The University of Limerick uses competency based interviews, public sector jobs. So they're really, really popular. A lot of graduate recruiters use them as well. And the idea behind them, again, if we're looking at behaviour, is that your past behaviour can be an indicator of future performance. They're also easy to score and your answers will be scored against predetermined criteria. So again, if they're scoring you on creativity, for example, or leadership, they might have a score from five to zero, five being, you know, excellent, zero being showing no evidence of. So, you know, you could, you'd be kind of scored using a sheet with specific criteria. And each of the questions in a competency-based um, interview will focus on a specific skill needed for that job. So again, that's why it's important that you have a look at the job description. You really think about the competencies that they've, you know, they've told you they're looking for, and you think about the evidence that you have.
So how will you know? You're at the interview. How will you know if you're being asked a competency based question? They're really easy to spot. And again, if you're not prepared, they can be a nightmare. So that's why preparation is key. So a competency question will usually start with, can you tell me about a time when? Can you give me an example of or can you describe? They're basically asking you to tell a story. So they're asking you to describe a time when you displayed a certain skill. What these questions do is they will allow employers to look at your skills and your behaviour and how you apply them in real life situations. For example, when have you used your communication skills to influence other people's behaviour or opinions? Next question is about working as a team. Third question is about you know, when you have to deal with an unexpected or changing situation. Again, if you're not prepared for these questions, you can be really caught off your guard in an interview. So it's really easy to find examples of competency based questions on the Internet. But you really have to think of specific examples of when you demonstrated these particular competencies. So they're basically asking you, as I said before, to tell a story. So how will you structure your answer? or your story. You obviously don't want it to go on for too long. You don't want to ramble. You don't want to go off the point. So hopefully you've heard of the STAR technique before, but it's a really good tool to use if you're structuring your answers in a competency-based interview. So for the STAR method, the S and the T, that's usually just kind of describing the situation, giving a brief overview of the situation, um, what was the situation, what was the task. You need to keep this section of your answer fairly short. I think this is sometimes where people make mistakes. They go into so much detail about the situation and the task and what had to be done. They forget about the most important part of the answer, which is the action section. So this section is where you talk about the role that you played. What did you do? And again, it's the most important part of the answer. The next part is the result. What was the result of the action that you took? What was the final outcome? What was the result? Would you have done things differently, possibly? So this is the structure that you need to use when you're answering a competency based question. And remember, it's the A for the action that you took and the R, they're the most important parts. The other two, the S and the T, are really just setting the scene. A couple of mistakes that a lot of people make when they're answering competency-based questions. People don't use a specific story, and that can happen if you're not prepared um, for a competency-based interview. You need to have specific examples ready and prepared to go. And sometimes, again, if, if, if you're there on the day and you're asked a specific competency based question, your mind can com go completely blank. So, you know, you might be asked a question on dealing with difficult customers. So what commonly happens is that people might say, oh, when this happens, this is what I would do. That's not what they're looking for at all. You need to think about a specific situation that happened to you or that you were involved in. And that's where you start from then. So a specific situation, not just, you know, a situation where you might do something or you would do something. So that's one mistake that people make. The biggest mistake I think that people make is they get so caught up in telling the story, especially if it's a teamwork example um, and the kind of the setting the scene and the task. And they tend to talk about we we did this, we did that, we decided, we managed. That's not what they're looking for in a competency-based interview. They're looking for what you did. What actions did you take? So again, it's good to practice. And I know it's very easy to slip into, well, we did this and we did that. But remember, they want to find out about you. So when you're answering a competency-based question, you are talking about I, okay? So you can start off with the we at the beginning, but as you go into kind of the story, into the action part, it's about what you did. So remember to use I when you're answering a competency based question. OK, that's it, basically. Summary, research the company, read the job description. The next important thing, identify your own skills and competencies. Again, have a look at that online assessment. That will definitely help you to understand where your strengths are, what your competencies are. Then you need to think about some examples from your own background, from your degree, from your work experience, from sports. 
I would definitely be writing out my answers using that STAR method. It can be quite tricky. It can be clunky. So just get used to kind of thinking about, okay, what was the situation? What was the task? What action did I take? And what was the result? Once you've done it for one or two competencies, it will become a lot easier. And again, you can use examples from any part of your life. Have those examples ready for the interview. OK, so again, remember, at a competency based interview, you will be asked for specific examples. Remember to talk about what I did, not we and practice. I think practice is the major activity that you can do here before any interview, but especially competency based interviews. So practice your answers out loud to yourself with a friend. You can also contact us in the career service. We'd be happy to give you some feedback and run through, through some competency based interviews as well. I think the more practice you do, like anything, the more confident you'll become. Um, and the last thing is we do a lot of interview preparation with students and sometimes you can see that they put so much preparation in. They've looked at kind of, you know, all the questions that might be coming up, but you can see they've nearly memorised the answers and it comes across as very stilted and wooden. So what you want to do is really be yourself at the interview. If you've done enough preparation and you've thought about the competencies and where your examples are, you know, you'll be fine. Just look at it as a conversation with a focus, but try not to memorise the answers because it's really obvious you know, to the interviewer or to anybody that you're talking to that you have memorised and you're just kind of saying them by rote. So remember not to memorise your answers, but you do need to do a little bit of practice. OK, here's a good tip as well. Um, if you haven't heard about this already, we have an excellent um, new platform on the UL Career Service website called Shortlist Me, where you can do lots of different practice interviews by video. So the completely in your own time, whenever suits you, 24 seven, you'll get a chance to practice some competency based questions. It will give you some, you know, you know, suggested answers and how you might answer the questions as well. So it's a really good place to practice if you want to do some practice just by yourself, you know, without anybody else and you will get feedback as well. But if you would like to meet myself or one of my colleagues, if you have an interview coming up in the next few weeks, in the next few months, and you think it's going to be a competency based interview, you can make an appointment to see us and we will help you to prepare for the interview. Um, we can do a practice interview with you um, using competency based questions, or we can just help you to talk through how you might answer some of those questions as well. OK, so thank you very much.